Ask its explanations part 4. Explanation from September 11, 1964, Marali, India. Written down with Asgath's memory assistance. The required procedure, leading up to the time travel transmission, took about 10 minutes, whereby, however, the actual jump, required to go from one epic to another, only lasted a split second. All that which appertained to the technology and the procedure was not explained by Asketh. With the launching of the transmission a quite weird thing happened in the form that the entire surroundings of the ship slowly simmered and then quite suddenly simply no longer existed. I also observed the same process in regard to myself, and in the moment of the jump, it was, to me, actually as if I suddenly no longer corporally existed. Somehow I felt transferred into something which I sensed as being eternity itself and in which an indescribable silence and endless, calming peace and enormous love ruled. The actual procedure, from a technical viewpoint, remain a puzzle to me, and certainly I will also never be able to solve this because I am unfortunately completely ignorant in regard to technology. But nevertheless I gain extraordinarily valuable insights into things which mean a very great deal to me. It was often for me as if I were raised up by being itself. Asketh took Jichi and me, during the following six days, into various epochs, part of the time very far back in the past, and part of the time into the future. I thereby saw and experienced things that are never compatible with the assertions of the archaeologists and the scientists from other fields. I had to recognize that many developed scientific theses of our time are indeed merely pure theses and completely lack any truth, especially regarding many events and occurrences in the past. But I also recognized that many events in natural science, and so forth, follow a completely different course than that which is asserted and described by our scientists. On these trips, I often believed that I was dreaming because everything appeared to me to be quite mad and fantastic. Alone the transmissions into other epochs seemed unbelievable to me, even after I already had several time travels behind me. Many times I saw that I was forced to test reality. However, I always found that I was subject to neither some sort of hallucinations nor other kinds of deceptions. I produced lasting, painful proof on myself which would bring it home to me for the whole rest of my life that I was not subject to any dreams or deceptions. Indeed, it also went no better for Jichi in this regard. Only he seemed to not very easily digest everything, because often I caught him cursing while furiously scratching out entire chapters of his Bible with a red pen. Having found reality completely different from the way it was described in the Bible must have made a great deal of work for him. From time to time I heard him talking to himself and issuing threats against those who still preach such nonsense today. I slowly developed serious concerns that he could become an anti-religious fanatic and that, after the final return into our normal time, he would go quite mad. But the remainder gave him the truth about the life and work of Emmanuel when Asketh led us back to the year 32 in order to, there and then, examine those events which are described so wrongly and counter to reality in the New Testament of the Christian Bible. Jichi went quite mad and ang ran amok, and he began to hate religion like the plague. He, who indeed had been a good believing Christian up to that point and had believed in the role of Christ as divine savior. Unfortunately, the various time travels may not be reported upon more closely because they contain values which are too deep, about which one must remain silent. But Asgath's permission extends to the point where a quite particular event, which is of more important significance, may, or must, be reported. It deals with the events concerning Emmanuel, which, during 2,000 years, 
were so malvolently falsified that a mass psychosis arose from it, as did a further religion, Islam, as well as many sects which were able to be constructed from it. However, I do not want to jump ahead with the events. Rather, I will precisely remain with Asgath's memory assistance and only report exactly that which she allows me to, through her esteemed help. So the first partial excerpts from her explanations, which she gave permission to have written down, follow. In this way the chronological sequence, which I am not entitled to alter, is also maintained. Asgath's Explanations Partial excerpt from Asketh's explanations from February 9, 1953, during second visit in the Heops Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. Asketh says, you wonder about the age of the pyramid. In truth its history is somewhat confused, because its origins lead back to very early times. Were I to tell them to you now, their meaning and the history of its origin would lead much too far. So I will only tell you the required data, according to which you can form a picture for yourself. This, and also a few other pyramids on the earth, was constructed when the constellation of Liar Liar, explanation of September 4th, 1975, was a positioned in the sign of cancer. That results in a time span of 2x36,650 years and therefore 73,300 years in total. You must calculate 2x36,650 years back from the time of the Hagira in order for you to obtain the correct figure. Until shortly before the Great Deluge, about 9,545 B.C. the pyramids here in this land remained abandoned to their fate and nobody bothered any more about them. But they acquired a significance again 300 years before the deluge, even if not in their original sense, which unfortunately, for many kinds of reasons, may not be named. But it still has to be explained that the erroneous assumptions of all of the earth scientists about the time of the Ark Deluge are just as very wrong, by umpteen thousands of years, as are the erroneous calculations, to which they have succumbed, about the times of various kings and emperors who lived thousands of years ago. The actual time, which was handed down to you earthlings, of the Deluge of the Ark, is also greatly falsified because it occurred nearly 100,000 years ago and therefore must be calculated to be very much earlier than the lifetime of King Salak who had taken over an important role in regard to the Pyramides. King Salak lived about 300 years before the Great Deluge. He had a son named Sorad, who in large measure had the ability to see into the future. In this way, in a dream, he saw a great comet which pulled along seven smaller comets behind it, which collided with the earth with terrible roaring sounds, whereby darkness came upon the world. Sword saw countless humans die because of that, because they were killed by the seven impacting comets. The few survivors did not know where they could save themselves in order to escape the hail of projectiles from outer space, which accompanied the catastrophe as well as the resulting stinking and hot bodies of water. Sorich reported his bad dream to his father who summoned all the astrologers and scientists in the land, 